The portrait ghosts in Luigi's Mansion are pretty iconic despite most of their encounters being short-lived. Throughout the game, as we progress from area to area, we vacuum up these spirits and then once the boss is clear, we then put them through the good old ghost portrificationizer to turn them back into paintings. Due to how the game is broken up into areas, and how after each boss encounter, the game forces you to return to the lab to empty your poltergeist, we often only unload small batches of ghosts at a time. But what if we broke the game and tried to capture every single ghost in one swoop? All bosses and all portrait ghosts. Is it possible? And what does it look like unloading every single ghost in the game at once? Let's find out. Dealing with mischievous spirits is one thing, but dealing with a city overrun with zombies is another. Dying Light is an open-world parkour zombie fighting experience like no other, and I'm happy to partner with them with the release of Dying Light on Nintendo Switch. Now you can fight to the horde on the go, tackle the world solo, or jump in with a few friends as you try your best to survive. Tap into gyro aiming to increase your accuracy, or utilize motion controls to immerse yourself into the game even more. And to make the experience even better, the enhanced and platinum editions of the game are now 50% off. So if you want to jump into your next insane adventure on the Switch, click the link in the description below to get 50% off the game. Also be sure to use my code to get a rare in-game item. And a huge thanks to Techland for sponsoring this video and supporting me as a creator. Okay, let's vacuum some ghosts. Almost a year ago, I attempted a speedrun where Luigi was a ghost. And in this speedrun video, we had the ability to go through walls and it was pretty bizarre. Of course, if nothing is stopping you, then the path to the end of the game is pretty fast. But using these modifications has side effects, and these are all things I learned when Ghost Luigi came back to the house to try to snatch up every ghost here. So let's go through this ghost by ghost and talk about the problems with trying to grab every ghost at once. Because even though you can simply go into every room, this still ended up being a long endeavor. And that is because the game broke a lot, and I spent a lot of time messing around, reloading a lot, and testing things. Fresh out of training, I decided to try to get most of these ghosts in order, at least by chapter, so I could keep track of them. At no point would I go back to empty my poltergeist at all, so we stroll into Neville's room unannounced, and because we didn't enter the room properly, his chair doesn't even load. Regardless, we vacuum Neville up. But we're a ghost, so we can try to pull Neville out of his room just for the fun of it. The game kept snapping me back into the room, but eventually I dragged Neville out of it and into the room adjacent to his. And then, uh, the timer and Neville just broke? It got stuck on 19 regardless of where I went, and I was free to drag it around. After letting go, I found Neville back in his room, so I finished the job. Neville down, onward to Lydia. We don't need keys because we're a ghost, so we can just walk through the wall. Because of what happened with Neville, I was super curious to see what other kinds of exploits could be used by dragging ghosts out of the rooms. And that's when something super strange happened. I decided to jump out of the window while vacuuming up Lydia. You know, something totally normal, and I fell into the backyard down below. But as soon as this happened, Lydia turned into Spooky the dog, and the HP from Lydia was applied to this portrait ghost instead. So instead of defeating Lydia, I cleared the backyard. I've never seen something like this before when trying to break the game, so it was a pretty interesting find. Going back up top to Lydia, her health was still at the same amount before she transformed into a dog. So I quickly vacuumed her up. I head to Area 3 and grab the Ice Metal just to test that weird occurrence again with ghosts leaving their rooms. But Miss Petunia, the showering ghost, didn't really lead to anything weird. So I let her go for now and proceeded on to the Area 2 ghosts. The flooding Whirlindas were up first, and I of course tried dragging them out of the room. They didn't leave though, and it did reset every ghost in the room. So I had to clear them all out again before grabbing the Whirlindas for good. I ended up going into the billiard room for the heck of it, and that's when I realized something was wrong. My ghostly abilities were interfering with the billiard balls, and none of them could be grabbed. This was foreshadowing problems I'd run into fairly soon, but I moved on to the conservatory to confront Melody in musical warfare. Something interesting about her is that if she's dragged out of her room, she instantly dies. Her health counter is still going, but the treasure chest spawning noise happens as soon as you leave, and she basically unloads. Reloading my save and trying again, this time she actually got stuck sending infinite sheets of paper at me and never got stunned. I basically couldn't vacuum her up regardless of how many papers I vacuumed. I tried a few more times to drag her out of her room, and each time she'd instantly die and turn into a treasure chest. It was pretty odd. After vacuuming her up for good, I decided to let the booze out into the mansion without moving the wall. 
That cutscene is a bit weird when the wall isn't moved. Luckily, even though it takes us to the lab, we don't have to empty our pack. Next up is getting the fire element so we can take on Mr. Lugs. Lugs can't be pulled out of his room and it just resets the whole encounter. So we make short work of him and move on. We grab the water element's metal and then light Mr. Shivers on fire, eventually claiming him as our next portrait ghost. Other than Bogmire, which we'll come back to, that clears out all the currently obtainable level 2 ghosts. Onward to Area 3, we start with Biff Atlas. Nothing too remarkable to add about that encounter. We then return to the bathroom to finish off Miss Petunia, who still has low health. Slim bank shots and the twins Henry and Orville were still unattainable though. I didn't mention it, but earlier I stopped into the twins room and realized they weren't loaded in. And regardless of how much I spin the helicopters, they wouldn't trigger. So that had me a bit worried at first. But thinking my next victim was going to be easy was a mistake. Because Nana was glitched. So normally, you need to hit her with three balls of yarn, and then she can be vacuumed up. But for whatever reason, the third ball would never hit her. It's always made her fade away. This normally happens if the player fails to hit her with one of three balls. But over and over again I tried with no luck. So I put Granny on the back burner and moved on. I was thinking I was going to take on Chauncey now, but not only did Luigi get sucked onto the void anytime I tried to float around as a ghost, but the ball attacks that Chauncey used in the battle floated up in the air. If you guys watched my ghost speedrun, you'll be familiar with the side effect of being a ghost. So I passed on Chauncey, because I realized I'd have to tackle all the problem ghosts at once. I then started collecting some Mario items for Madame Clairvoya. I was a bit worried about the whole twins not spawning, because that also meant that I couldn't get all the Mario items needed to capture Madame Clairvoya. But without any other obtainable ghosts currently, I moved on to Bulasis. Bulasis as a fight is… uh, never fun under any circumstances. Quite honestly, it's the most annoying boss encounter in the game, but I muscle through it and collect the boss in my first 15 boos. Unknown to me, doing the bosses out of order like this actually screws up Luigi's spawn position. You'll see what I mean in a little bit. As long as we don't open the chest, we're fine, since we won't be warped back to the lab. Instead, we head downstairs and clean out the graveyard to take on Bogmire. Bogmire's fight as a ghost was a bit weird because none of my projectiles would shoot, so I had to walk them up to Bogmire to hit him. He goes down pretty easily though, but as you can see, upon defeat from Bogmire, it spawns me back up on the balcony and reloads the chest. Kind of strange. Now at this point, I know I have some stragglers to take care of, and I know Chauncey is going to have to be obtained under different circumstances. So I press on to tackle some Area 4 ghosts. The Clockwork Soldiers are up first. Don't step out of bounds because if you do, some of their health will refill. I did this accidentally, and the fight was basically twice as long because of it. Collecting Jarvis is the same as always, so nothing interesting to add. Plunging downward to the basement, we're taking on Sir Weston next, and after him, we're vacuuming up Vincent Van Gore. We sneak into Sue P's room, hose her down while she's sleeping, and then kidnap her. I mean, that's basically what happens. But at this point, I'm worried about Uncle Grimley. The ghost has spawns in the blackout. So before trying to tackle him, I decide to circle back around and focus on ghosts I could not obtain before. So I save with Toad, and then exit the game to reboot the game without my ghostly abilities to pass through walls and fly. First up are tackling Chauncey. The fight is now pretty normal, except for the fact I spawned on the roof again. Oh yeah, I can't pass through walls, and I don't have a key to get off the roof. Whoops. Luckily we can just enable a door unlock cheat and exit the area. Still looking ghostly despite not being ghostly, we head back to grandma's for another yarn ball showdown. This time she can actually be hurt though, as the side effects of walking through walls isn't hindering her damage states. Funeral services for grandma will be this Sunday. Slim Bankshot's billiard balls are now acting normal too, so we can add him to our collection as well. Using our universal key from before, we can now load the twins properly. I guess it makes sense that the twins would not function with a locked door. I mean, we walked through the wall before. But because Luigi has to use the door as a switch to advance the hide and seek plot in the room, I can understand why the event doesn't load when the door isn't used. Although I vacuumed up both twins at this point, I realized that I could have left one behind if I wanted to. I wonder how the game would have treated that when only one twin was put through Egad's machine. Anyways, we get Mario's shoe, and now we can vacuum up our fortune teller friend. But there's still one problem. Normally, using the door on the balcony makes a power outage happen, but this only can occur if the game is advanced to Area 4. But we can't do that without emptying our vacuum. So unfortunately, there is no way to grab Uncle Grimly. He's the one ghost that is going to survive this whole ordeal. 
Mind you, maybe there's a combination of cheats that perhaps I overlooked, but only missing one ghost isn't too shabby. A bit defeated, I move on to a very annoying and floaty fight with Bowser. It's honestly terrible, but we get the job done. And now it's time to finally unload our Poltergust. All our ghosts are loaded into the machine, and now we sit back for the longest painting-making process ever. It's interesting because with all these ghosts accessible, there is still a set order. Bosses from first to last are a priority and show up first, and then it moves back to Area 1 ghosts, then onward to Area 2, then 3, and finally it all ends with Area 4, with the very last ghost being the Creepy Ice Dude. From the moment Chauncey emerges from the end of the machine, it takes 89 seconds to get through every spirit. So you basically just sit there for a minute and a half watching all the paintings come out and go down. If we had Uncle Grimly, it would add about another 4 seconds. It's a pretty long, awkward wait. Moving on to the results screen, it basically plops them all down in succession. Honestly, I think it's pretty neat that the game knows it still needs a pan between all these different areas, even though Area 1 doesn't have any optional ghosts. Thus, it would never need to pan over to the next section, yet the logic for this still exists. It makes me wonder if Area 1 used to have an optional ghost because of this. Or maybe Uncle Grimly was considered an Area 1 ghost at one point, since he appears in the starting area. It's definitely interesting. But with that, we've ran all but one ghost through the machine at once, and created a very long wait time for turning Mario back to normal. I hope you enjoyed this bizarre look at extending the ending sequence, and I'll see you all soon in the next video. Cheers!